All right, this is the next episode of True Wrestling Fans Discussions. Uh, we're going to be going over Bash at the Beach 1994. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank. Let's get into this with without falling asleep. Um, this pay-per-view, the buildup was, was okay when they brought Hulk Hogan mm-hmm. in. You're going to get the match that we technically we never saw on a pay-per-view. I mean, if you want, if you went to a house show in WWE or Saturday Night Main or something along the lines, Hogan and Flair did lock up. But this was the first time on a major pay per view for the championship that uh, WCW was able to pull off that WWE the dream, couldn't. The dream match. Yeah, the execution of the rest of the card was something to be desired, and I'm but gonna this, get into that right now. But this got a lot of uh, a lot of people tuning into WCW. Because, yeah. Hulk, because Hogan was there. So, you know, say what you want to say about Hogan's early run, first couple of years, but it got people got people to tune in at least. Mm-hmm. And it also deal. brought in most of the talent that had left WWE yeah. the year prior. Because, you know, you remember at, the, at the end of the night, you remember you saw Beefcake, you saw Duggan, mm-hmm. who had Duggan had just left and come on over. Um, and this, the, uh, unfortunately, this was the um, end for most of these WCW guys as Bischoff was kind of, changing the regime, you know, all of a sudden Ric Flair, who has been the workhorse of the place, is now going to take a back seat Prima, for the time being. Mm-hmm. Steve Austin, the same thing happened with him as they started bringing in all the other talent. June 17th, 1994, they had a capacity crowd of 14,000. The I thought the way they had the venue was all right. In a bigger arena, it would have been nice for this, something like 30,000, 40,000 to see this. Um, member WWE and WrestleMania eight, if they would have been able to pull that off, how big the crowd would have been. Yeah, I'm curious if they would have, if they booked this um like months in advance, even before Hogan signed there, so they already had it booked, booked that arena booked. I don't even, I don't know. Maybe there's no talent. You know, they got Shaquille O'Neal to be there, who was in Orlando, the phenom of the of the NBA at the time. Also, you know, Orlando Magic obviously was in Orlando, so that was a big that was a big deal. Yep, and they were getting hot at the time. Now that they had O'Neal, so it was good to see him there. It was weird to see how young he was watching this. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Lord. Opening bout for the night was for the television championship. It was Lord Steven Regal versus Johnny B. Bad. It was supposed to be Sting in this match, but for whatever reason, they wrote him out. I'm I, I, not 100% sure if he had a legitimate injury, although I think the storyline injury was a little ridiculous with the scratched cornea. Keeps him out of the match. I thought that was kind of... Well, they showed Pinky. that you're talking about Sherry, right? When she yeah, when she, she raked his eyes, she interfered in the R- Ric Flair versus uh, Sting match on Saturday, uh, WCW Saturday Night with Hulk Hogan ringside. But I'm curious, I, I, was that even a title match? Was was that yeah. a title match? And the, so the winner was gonna Hogan was gonna face the winner of that. Mm-hmm. So if he won, then Sting wouldn't have fought, right? Because he would have been the champion. Yeah, it was. And then, but, but that also doesn't make any sense because he was already in a title match against Regal. And, oh, I mean, right. I don't know where, where the direction well, that's, is. So that's how time. you knew. So then that's probably how you knew he wasn't going to win. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, if, if you're going to use an injury, don't use a scratch corner yet because, I mean, yeah. come on. Johnny B. Bad. <laughs> I actually like Johnny B. Bad. In WCW, he was good. Yes, he was. He was flamboyant, energetic, got the crowd going. Uh, he, had, he had a good match against Regal. I thought it was interesting. Uh, this was actually a, te- a television title fight that actually ended with a victory. Regal gets the victory at 10 minutes and 40 mm-hmm. seconds, holds on to the belt. Um, what was funny was after the contest, when they brought in Antonio Inoki to give him the uh, the award, Regal comes in and all of a sudden starts running his mouth, issuing a challenge. Inoki takes his jacket off. Regal goes running. It was kind of entertaining to see. Would have been nice to see if Inoki could clock him. Yeah, but um, you know, because you remember, Inoki was sitting down uh, ringside with the uh, the higher ups there. I liked how when the pay per view started, Bobby Heenan was talking, and he's basically just rehashing his beef with Hogan from the WWF days, and he's just going on and on about him. He's bashing the Hulkamaniacs, he's calling them humanoids and everything. So that, that was well, cool. the one one good thing over the over the wrestling years between the mid '80s to the late '90s with Heenan and Hogan was you're mm-hmm. always gonna have the scuffle. Yeah. Even 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 when Hogan turned bad, now all of a sudden Heenan's turning good yeah. and he's still going. Right. Out. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It, was, it was just classic stuff. Shivani actually he he didn't do what he would do normally with the NWO 
as far as constantly talking about the main event. He only did it part of the time uh, when he was doing the commentary with Heenan and then when with, with Ventura, they made me mm-hmm. stuck to the match. Yeah. The next match was a uh, crap fest, in my opinion. It was the Guardian Angel versus Vader. I mean, call, call him what you want. I, I'd like to say boss man, but we obviously can't hear because that wasn't his name. The, the match had it had a few moments, but the outcome of this match was there wasn't even a disqualification. Vader time. And, and the referee just calls it. It's a DQ. Vader wins. I'm like, what? Yeah. Are you kidding me here? I mean, but it's good to see guys that big that can move. Like yeah, Russell. very agile. You know, yeah. Vader, Vader with the Vader bomb and the, and the moon salt bomb. Guardian Angel, even in WWE, was always that way. He could always move around the mm-hmm. ring. He picked up Vader, which was pretty impressive. You know, the the match was good, but the ending, the execution of the ending, was just retarded. I'm sorry. It was just he's holding the 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 stick and all of us. Oh, you used no. it. Ring the bell. Come on. And it was and it was just under eight minutes, so they didn't even really give that match any time. The, the the first three matches flew by. It was the last three that were just like, you gotta be kidding me. And the next match, I the first time I ever watched this pay-per-view, I knew what I knew what was gonna happen. Because you just you know the guy. It's Dustin Rhodes teaming with Arn Anderson to face Terry Funk and Bunkhouse Buck of the Stud Stable. Yeah. I mean I just when Arn Anderson told him when he'd be his partner, he goes, you're going to get the old Arn Anderson. Yeah. Well, that right there should tell you <laughs> that should tell what you you're getting. Gonna... Yeah, yeah, it was about to happen, yeah. Yeah, and and to me, I don't know, Arn Anderson was too energetic on, on the apron. He's getting all into it. Do it, you know, never got in the ring yet. Dustin Rhodes is beating the crap out of both of these guys. And, you know, Arn Anderson finally gets tagged in. He goes, okay. And he does, does like a Jim the Anvil Nightheart. He goes over, he pats him, he pats him. He's holding him, the DDTs him. Turns on his partner. Dustin Rhodes gets the loss. Arn Anderson joins the stud stable, which would set up Paul Brawl down the line. Um, he just the predictability of this kind of took away from the match. But Dustin Rhodes still showed that regardless of the guys that are coming in, I still belong here, and oh, I yeah. do, I do belong in the main event spot, which they never gave him. Yeah, this is another guy that Bischoff is kind of trying to move mm-hmm. away from, which is unfortunate because Dustin Rhodes put on some of the most Tremendous. Match yeah, no, he was he was period. a good worker. He was a good worker for sure. So our next match is the one I enjoyed, and it was for the United States title. It was stunning Steve Austin yeah. defending the title against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. This is where I woke up. Yes, this is these I... two can, <laughs> man, these two can battle. You know, I forgot and... that he wore. I forgot that he wore that that WWF gear, the Dragon gear that he wore yeah. when he came because he had went to WWF a little while and then he came like back. Month. Yeah, and then he came back. I forgot that he bore the gear. He just didn't wear the head thing, but he had the he was, wings. And he I had didn't the like color. the head thing. <laughs> uh, and, he, and he had the colors. Yeah, yeah. Steamboat still looked great. I mean, he he was still he was still hanging around, but unfortunately, a couple of guys here that eventually Bischoff's going to move away from. But these two put on it over a twenty minute match. I love how Austin had on the back of his chites Dragon Slayer. Yeah, the Dragon which was Slayer. Kind of cool. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Um, he gets the, the, the roll up in this and he keeps the United States title. But again, these yeah. two put on a clinic in there. They, they could wrestle. It was it was a really good match. I, I bet you you didn't notice this when they fall out of the ring, when they're, they're fighting outside the ring. The United was the United States Championship, right? Mm-hmm. The United States Championship is just like on the floor, just like on the floor, like a piece of garbage. And when Steve Austin leaves, he doesn't even take the belt with him. He just leaves. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I wonder why a, they, they probably just forgot. This is WCW. Don't forget that. So the, I saw I, you would think that the belt would have been like on a table. The belt was I, I saw it. It was on the floor. Then when Austin leaves, he just forgets the belt and just he hightails it out of there. WCW. <sighs> but it was a good match, though. But it was good. It was. It's actually the last good, decent pay-per-view match that Austin's going to have. Yeah. Before it happens. It, it, what, what happens to him. But I mean, uh, again, these two. And I, I fall, going forward at Fall Brawl, I believe Steamboat was supposed to have the rematch with him, and they he's something where he got injured, which is why they brought in who they did later on. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, this was, to me, one of the best matches on the card besides the yeah. main event. I think it's around this time where they, they show um, 
they showed the commentators, and then that guy that's dressed up as Hulk Hogan that goes to all the events, he just keeps mm-hmm. sticking his head in. Like through, from this point on, throughout the entire pay per view, did you notice that when they're they showed the commentary table, he's just sticking his head out, yeah, to try to get on camera. It reminds me of you remember Rocky Part One where um he's uh, Rocky's doing the interview. This is right before he starts punching the meat. And and then like Paulie keeps trying to stick his head in, and and they tell uh, the cameraman's <laughs> yeah, like, you yeah. got to get that guy out of get that guy out of there. <laughs> well, Paulie was trying to get his fifteen. Minutes, my, and then Heenan says something. He says, "That's not Hulk Hogan. That's some idiot." Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of a uh, couple of the fans that used to be WWE um, uh, pay per view fans. Remember the guy that always used to be in the tuxedo at WrestleMania? Mm-hmm. The loyal. I actually, man. I actually spotted him three rows back at, at Bash at the Beach. So yeah. Where Hulkamania goes, you know, these guys go. You know what's interesting too in this match? Um, Steamboat does the reverse tombstone. Yeah. On um, and, and, but he actually goes to his knees, unlike what Owen did when he dropped mm-hmm. on his ass, and that's what caused Austin to get temporarily paralyzed. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed yeah, I, that I, spot I, here. I'm like, oh wow. Yeah, how they were each reversing it. Yeah. And then Steamboat was able to get it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this was a great match between the two. The next match almost had me asleep. All right, it was for the WCW tag team titles, Cactus Jack and Kevin Sullivan. Yeah. You know, it's pretty wonderful. You know what's interesting about this? As I was watching this, I was thinking about it. I'm like, isn't it amazing that they have WCW at the time on the roster had Steve Austin and Cactus Jack, aka Mick Foley. These guys would go on to be to WWE and become mega stars. Mm-hmm. And over here, they really were stuck kind of in the mid card, and they're bringing all the WWF guys. And it's amazing that they had those two and they're on this pay-per-view. Then they go on to have one of, you know, great rivalry, obviously. Oh, yeah. And they become megastars. They didn't, well, at the time, they didn't know <laughs> what to make of Cactus Jack because his his, his way in the ring was kind of unheard of. I mean, yeah. you know, nobody really knew about ECW and hardcore wrestling. And this guy was trying to, I don't, not mimic well, it, but he had his own style well, in the ring. Remember, Ric Flair called him a glorified stuntman. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Which is what you know, if you remember that that uh, SummerSlam match those two had, there was a, quite a few blows that connected in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh yeah, Bischoff didn't know what to make of this guy. You know, he, he was on his way out, which is a shame. Sullivan I I never could get uh behind that guy in the and ring. I mean, he was good behind the scenes to yeah, an extent. Yeah, I guess creatively maybe Sullivan. Yeah, but was. but in the ring Then his brother was wise, his brother was there dressed up with the Hulk Hogan gear. Oh, uh, what's his, what's his name from a year ago? Uh, I forgot the name they 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 gave his gimmick. Um, I don't remember, but it, it'll it'll come to me. But yeah, he was. How about, uh, he had a different gimmick one year. How prior. about Paul Paul Londorf does like this weird dance? Yeah, like okay. before he drops down. Uh, and, he, and even he, uh, even the, the commentator is like, "What would you call that?" Yeah, they don't even know. Romo, I mean, Romo was good though. Romo, you know, he was they he was both athletic. Great. Romo and, and Romo, they they yeah. look terrific. It's just. You're going did into you, the ring against two guys that are you know, crackheads, you know. Did you they got a different style? Did you notice Roma had the wild? Um, I'm not the wild. I'm thinking about Bill and Ted's uh, excellent adventure. The young stallions jacket. He had yes. it. Obviously, it didn't say the name, but he had the same jacket. I'm like, mm-hmm. wow, he kept that thing from years ago, because he was coming off Power and Glory, not you know, however many years, a couple years ago, whatever, whatever yeah. it was. Um, but he still had the jacket. I, I just noticed that. I'm like, wow, he still had that jacket. Surprised to let him keep it. Pretty Paul Roma. Yeah. So they um they won the titles, right? Yeah, they won the, yes. won the titles in this song. Um, 20 minutes, 10 seconds, pretty wonderful. Gets the tag titles. Of course, this is kind of the the start of the split up with the longtime tag team of Cactus and Kevin. Yeah. Which it wasn't even supposed to be Cactus Jack. It was actually supposed to be Dave Sullivan in the match, but right. for whatever reason, injuries or whatnot. You know, and, you know, of course, he's walking around with the Hulkamania shirt on, which is gonna start infuriating yeah, later, later yeah. on. And I mean, um, just the uh, shenanigans in this match, you know, the hold down of, of the foot and yeah, everything. Yeah. It was just, it, it, again, the ending, the execution wasn't there. The, the match could have been a little bit. I noticed a lot of people kind of heading to the concession stands during this yeah, match. Yeah. There wasn't it a wasn't real pop really. in the crowd. So, and again, this is now, okay, I took the title off Cactus. Now I can start moving into the exit. Yeah. This is all Bischoff's plan. You can just see it. Now we go to our main event. Well, before that, they had a they had a promo with Flair. Before that, I remember they had a promo oh, yes. with Rick Rick Flair and Sherry. It was a pretty it was a pretty good promo. I like how Bobby Heenan says, "Well, even if uh, even if Hogan wins tonight, I'm calling it right now it was a fluke." 
And not to mention, you notice that during the at the beginning of the night, which this was unheard of back then, they said Hogan's a former five time champion. They did it. They well, they they introduced him as that. Mm-hmm. Michael Buffer. And they also screwed up because mm-hmm. Michael Buffer just uh, said that he's coming off a three year layoff. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. This is June. He, it hasn't even been a year it's since a his, year, last yeah. wrestling, his, uh, his last appearance on a house show for a contractual agreement was the end of July when but even the BFK fought Money Inc. But I mean, if you want to get wise, even, it was a year. I mean, if you want to get technical, he he wrestled earlier in the year in Japan. Exactly. Well, I mean, we won't get into that because th- I guess that doesn't count, but it yeah. was a year. He was off for about a year. Even yeah. if Bobby Heenan says it, Bobby Heenan's like Bobby yeah, said it was a th- uh, two he's or three rusty. year layoff. He's rusty. It's like a two or two or three two to three year layoff. Um, Rick, you know, Ric Flair came out. Ric Flair is the champion, and he why comes is out he coming first. out first? Exactly. Why the, ego, the egomaniac? Yes, I was just gonna. You just beat me to it. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. The champion here, in this case is coming out first. Yep. And Hogan's coming out last, and not to mention Hogan dropped about thirty pounds. You could tell steroids. Yeah, you you could tell. Um. How, how much weight he actually lost? Yeah, he. he uh, they said he was two seventy two. Yeah, I mean, I, in I, WWE was three hundred three. I don't go off the weights that I'm just going visually looking. They exaggerate. They exaggerate weights, anyways. You can't really go off of that. Yeah, but um, yeah, Hogan comes out. He got a good pop. He came out to the, you know, he's American made. Whatever. The, not I'm quite not used to the song. I get it. it kind of after a while, it grew on me. It did. He came out with 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 Mr. T. Um. He comes to the ring, and then Shaq was was going to be present whoever was the champion with the title. It's just funny how there's all that interference during the match, and Mr. T is like nowhere to be found during this match. Exactly. He ends up at some point. He ends up coming out, but I'm like, where's Mr. T? Like, isn't he supposed to be in Hogan's corner helping him? He's nowhere to be found. I, this this match. It actually looked like at one point they were searching for a way to end the match because it's like they it almost... felt it felt like there was like false finishes there, right? Like they, they, there was. It was kind of like they were, oh, should we end it now? How are we going to end this? Hulk Hogan hulks up like four times during this match. Exactly, yeah. i never and seen him hulk up that much in a match. I, I don't know if they if they couldn't find the ending or when exactly to do it until they finally did execute the, felt, the, it, the leg drop. I mean, I thought the match was decent, though. I mean, I did. It was. I, was, I was entertained. Like, I thought it was a good match. Mm-hmm. But there were times where I was like, are they trying to end this now? Hogan kept hulking up. Sherry's interfering all over the place. Finally, Mr. T grabs Sherry, he picks her up. Yeah. Like, why didn't you do that 10 minutes ago? Exactly. Um, and I don't know about you, but every referee, time every time Hogan misses that leg drop, I always get nervous that he's going to blow his knee out or something. But did you see that he hurt the wrong leg? He misses yeah. the leg drop with the right, and then he starts holding on to the left. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, God. Um, Hogan botches the figure four. I don't know if you noticed that. He botched yeah, it. He didn't, know how, he didn't know how to put it on. Because he's never really he's never right. done it. So why but, why is he bothering? But if you and I but if you and I know how, how to do the figure four, I would imagine that Hogan would know how to do the figure four. Right? Yeah. He just kind of turned his leg and put his leg there instead of turning around. You know, and then I guess it's it, it was mainly toward like an insult to Flair, like, hey, I'm gonna put my I'm gonna, finishing I'm on gonna, you. Yeah. I mean, it actually would have been cool if Flair would have had the leg drop. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, it was a good spot. And uh, I guess the referee uh did the referee got knocked out. Yes, the Nick gets Patrick knocked came out. in. Then Nick Patrick, this is before. It was Randy Anderson. Yeah, Nick Patrick. And then, um, it's funny because the president, I forgot who it was. It Bachwinkle? Was it Nick yes. Bachwinkle? He's there. He's the president. He's there with Sherry doing all of this nonsense, and he doesn't do anything about it. It's like, it's like a and Jack Tunney thing from right, a few right. years ago. No, even worse. And then and then they they said, oh, yeah, Nick Bachwinkle said that, that, that this guy could be the referee now. It's fine. I was like, but why wasn't he saying anything about Sherry? I don't know. Exactly. Eventually, eventually Hogan goes over. Get the title. We all saw that coming. Yeah, obviously. He got a great pop. He got a great pop when he won the title. He got a great great pop when he was introduced. You know, he's there celebrating. Um, then they uh they kind of drag it out. They go to the bat the back. Did you hear what he said when he he's in the hallway? He said, One man, one champ. Yeah. That referring to when they unified the title. When they unified, that's that's how he didn't he didn't want the two the two champions. That's how I took it to when he said one man, one champ. I thought Um, it was a slap in the face to Rude. And uh, I like and whatnot. Nah, I didn't. You know, it's they're going with Hogan. I get it. I know Hogan goes into business for himself, but they gave him the ball and he ran with it. And he, to his credit, it got a lot of people watching the program. So I mean, I really it wasn't did. watching WCW before that. When Hogan got there, that's when I started to kind of tune in more more consistently. I did like how they even before the locker room interviews, 
Bobby is like all depressed. You see Bobby DeBrain Heaton sitting there. He's like all depressed. Bobby was awesome. Awesome. And then they finally go to the back and they have the interviews. Did you see Brian Pillman kind of? He was there. But yeah, he's just, like, he's just like, he's just like, he's like there. He's got his he head in the center. Right, there. right, 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 right. Like somebody getting on TV here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you had oh. Duggan, you had Beefcake. Yeah, of course, and, Beefcake was there. He got his okay. boy a job. But yeah, it, the, the fans did definitely. I mean, there was still, Hulkamania was still popular at that yeah, point. Yeah, they were trying to bring back Hulkamania to a new audience to a degree because this was more of the Southern audience. Mm-hmm. Um, and, Bish- and Bischoff had said that he was trying to get away from the southern based yeah, mentality so. of the whole thing, which is unfortunate. But it's just yeah. like if I'm Ric Flair, I'm like, I just got replaced by this guy, and yeah. I've been here all this time. And then Hogan goes on to beat him like a hundred times after this. Yeah, I think it was only one time Flair ever won. And then, which is yeah. ridiculous. And then when Macho Man comes in, Macho Man goes over on, on Flair a bunch of times too. How many times Flair was just made a mockery of in the mid car and flair said it uh, on when well, wcw closed down he goes i was glad when they when they shut this glad. place he was also crying in the middle of the ring but you know so. well it was sad to see something that him and that because his last match on nitro was against sting yeah. those two single-handedly built up that company until hogan came in yeah and then it so, was just they were just way to the late, late side. this was this was the beginning of it Mm-hmm. But um, overall, I mean, I guess the pay per view was okay. The main event was two good. out of the six matches were good. Yeah, it was. Austin put on a clinic with Steamboat, yeah. and of course Hogan and Flair mm-hmm. weren't going to disappoint in this match. And I, I but think the rest I, of it was yeah. average. I think technically this is the first Bash at the Beach because I think it was Beach Blast yeah. before that. Mm-hmm. So this is like the rebranding. Yeah, wasn't it, it the year before it was Shockmaster? Was it? I believe so. I was it ninety two? Was it ninety two? Ninety three? Ninety three, because those when Bulldog and had gotten there with Sting yeah. and Sid was feuding with, uh, yeah. with uh, and had Harlem Heat, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's our review for Bash uh, ninety four. You guys, let us know what you think. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. See you guys soon. Take care.